Hello everyone, welcome back to Art a la carte. If you follow me on Facebook, then you will probably know that I've already tried to record this video once and did a really fun drawing and totally forgot to push the record button. <laughs> so we're trying again. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to draw a tiger. Now, I have a couple videos on drawing big cats already and a couple speed drawings, um, but so we're going to do a kind of a different position for this tiger. We're going to have one kind of just walking straight towards us. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just block in my shapes. Now, at first, this is going to seem really weird the way these shapes are going, but I'm going to first start off with kind of a circle shape for the head of my tiger. And then I'm going to bring his backbone, and because he's walking straight towards us, I'm actually bringing his backbone out of the top of the circle. And you might be going, what? But just wait and, and you'll see how this works. Okay, so here's this, and then I'm going to put in his shoulders. And so I'm going to put kind of a diagonal line here, because um, he's bringing this paw forward, and so it's kind of up a little bit higher than this shoulder. And then I'm going to put a little bit of a diagonal for his back hips. Now he looks like a circle with like an antenna on top of his head, but here we go. This is this is where it gets cool. So I'm going to draw the outside lines of his legs coming down here, and his front leg is coming towards us, and so it's a little bit, we're going to draw it nice and big there. Then this back leg is a kind of, as he's walking, is tucked still a little bit back behind him. So it's going to stop a little bit further back on the paper. And because as you draw things, as they get farther away from you, one of the things that happens is, one, they get smaller in size, but two, as you draw things farther away, you draw them higher up on the paper. So if I were to draw a tree closer, it would be down here at the lower part of the paper, but if I wanted to draw trees far away, I would put them further back up higher on the paper. So you have that distance looking at things. So since this leg is going to be further back, it's going to stop a little bit uh, farther back than this leg comes down. All right, and then I'm just going to kind of round up around for the for the backs, uh, like of his hips and stuff. So even though you won't see the back legs really too much in this drawing because they're you know the front part of the tiger is hiding them, you would see the kind of the backbone and the hips from this angle because we're kind of at a higher angle looking down on this tiger a little bit. Now, now that we have kind of this blocked in here, I'm going to kind of block in his face and I'm going to determine what direction he's looking. And I'm, I'm not going to have him look straight towards the camera, just slight off a little bit. So I'm going to put that line at a bit of a diagonal. And I'm going to X this down here. And it's not, it's not totally um, halfway between here. It's down a little bit further. He has a pretty large forehead. And for his muzzle area, I'm just going to put in another circle area down here for his muzzle. So this builds in the shape of what I want the head to be. And again, I'm drawing really loosely. I'm not trying to get the actual precise line right now. I'm worried more about getting the positioning and the motion in the drawing first before I go back and lay it in my detailed lines. All right, I just want to kind of tuck in my ears a little bit. So I'm going to put in one ear right here, and I'll put another ear right in there. Okay. So that gives me my shape of my tiger walking towards us. So let's put in his eyes. So we're going to go to where we X this out, and I'm going to go over to the side. I'm going to put one eye, two. I'm just going to put circles in right now. Then about halfway down from this circle here, which would almost be at the bottom of this first circle, I'm going to put kind of a flat, upside down triangle shape, and that's going to be for his nose. And then for his actual mouth, I'm going to put an upside down Y shape that's really kind of flat as well. And that's going to round up for his muzzle right there. And then he'll have his little chin right there. Okay, now before I continue on and getting any more detail, I'm going to take my eraser and I'm going to go ahead and erase the lines that I don't need. Um, it's just easier to do it at this point before I start really putting in some detail, especially before I start putting in his stripes because it would be very hard to erase around his stripes. And it's okay if you erase some of the lines that you actually do want, because they're very easy to put just put back in. I'm just gonna kind of clean up everything. And then you can go back and you can darken in those lines that you really want. And kind of, now, now you're looking at detail. You wanna get the right positioning for things, kind of those details in there. 
when you're drawing your fur, instead of just making it a swooping line, you might want to add a little bit of a jagged appearance um, to him to make it look kind of like some nice fur coming around here. Okay, and I'll put some fur inside of his ears there. There we go. Alright, I'm going to kind of fix up his nose just a little bit. And to give the indication of the nostrils, I'm just going to kind of shade in the sides just a little bit. I'm going to put a very faint line up through the middle. Now to give him his really kind of broad snout, I'm going to bring this line up and around kind of a little bit. And I probably won't connect it too much on this side because his head's turned just a little bit this direction. So this line would be a little bit more severe. I'm finding his eyes are a little close together. I want them a little bit farther apart. So I'm just going to put him in there. And that's where we put things in lightly so it's easy to erase. Now to put in the finished details for his eyes, I'm going to put his tear ducts, which kind of come down towards the point, kind of pointing down towards the nose a little bit. And then it goes up to the top of the eyeball and then out straight to the side. So you get this kind of really cool cat eye look, which is good because he's a cat. Okay, and then you can kind of put in his little pupils right there. All right, so right now he's kind of looking like a big cat. Um, but he's not looking like a tiger, and that's because, obviously, he doesn't have his stripes. So let's go ahead and put his stripes in there. Now, tiger stripes, even though they follow an idea of a pattern, are not exactly the same for each and every single tiger. They're unique and different. Um, but to follow that kind of pattern, you'll first take and just draw a very light line down the center of his forehead, and stop right before you get to his eyes. So you don't want to go right down between his eyes, but stop right there. Then from out from these sides, you're going to kind of bring out some little stripes on each side. And the stripes can uh, vary in, in size and length. Um, and then when you go to the other side, you don't have to totally match. You want them to be similar, but not totally matching. So don't worry about that. If you look at photos of tigers, you'll see that their stripes don't exactly mirror each other. They some are a little bit fatter, some are a little bit skinnier, some you know, kind of flop out there a little bit more. Um, so don't worry about that. It's, it's not a big deal at all. Okay, so we have the forehead stripes in here. And now we're going to go ahead and bring around the cheek stripes. And these just kind of come out and follow around the contour of the face and kind of come all the way down to where his cheeks are. And we'll put another one in there. And we'll do one on this side. And one more. Alright, now it's starting to look like a tiger. Alright, so then we're going to add just a couple more just incidental little stripey spots. And we're going to put in some little kind of small stripes underneath the eyes. Just wherever you think there might need to be a stripe. Just look at reference photos and it'll kind of show you how those stripes go. Some stripes are a little bit more dots than stripes. Okay, there he is. And he even has kind of, it's not really stripes, it's kind of just um, his whisker pattern. But it kind of comes out. And there's sometimes a little bit of shading, a little darker on the tip of his nose right there. Now my tiger's looking a little cute. He's not looking, you know, massive and all this. And so sometimes it just helps to kind of stand back, take a look at it and go, what can I change to make that? And sometimes it's the smallest thing that to change. In this case, it's his muzzle. It's a little bit too small in proportion to his face. So even though I have done a lot of work, I'm going to go ahead and erase this. And you'll notice because I've already pushed pretty hard, it's going to be harder to erase those lines. But it'll be worth it once we get all our shading in there. And I'm going to add in his muzzle, but I'm going to pull out just ever so slightly larger than before. 
and you're going to see that this is going to make all the difference. This is going to really change his appearance there. There we go. So we have a slightly bigger muzzle. Put in his little cheeks or his little muzzle stripes. And I want to make his the bridge of his nose just a little bit bigger. Erase that out just a bit. A lot of times when artists are drawing a picture, they'll get to that point and they'll know something is wrong with it. Instead of just studying it and saying, okay, what is it that I need to change? They'll just give up, throw the picture away, and declare they can't draw that. Um, and that doesn't help you. So it may just take you just staring at the picture for a while, looking at reference photos, measuring up things. It may take you um, actually putting the picture aside and not looking at it for a while. And then when you know looking at it the next day kind of gives you a fresh uh, vision of what it is. Helps you to see that and go, oh, that what it is. I see it now. But whatever you do, don't give up on your drawing because it will never get better unless you actually work with it. All right, so let's look at the rest of the tiger stripes. So for these tiger stripes on his legs, they just kind of curl up around his legs. Up into his body there. And we'll do a little bit right here. As it gets down further down his legs, the stripes become a little bit um, sparse until down in his paws, there really aren't a lot of, st of stripes at the, the base of his paws. Now his back is going to follow the same kind of um, pattern where he has kind of that line and then the stripes come down off of this. Okay, and then I might just have um, his tail just kind of flowing off. He's kind of wagging his tail. So let's put his tail out there and put some stripes on that. Grabbing a tag by the tail. Okay, and tigers are one of the few cats in the world that love water. So I'm actually going to draw him um, walking through some water. So I'm going to follow the contour around. I'm not going to make like a straight line across with it where his paws are, but kind of just curve that around and that will give that impression that something's flowing around there. And then I'm going to give kind of some little bit of rippling. You can also bring up some splash marks, you know, if he's going to splash his way through as he's walking. Now, if you want to add a little bit more depth um, to this picture, add a little shading in there. And remember, shading helps push things back. So, because I want his head to come out a little bit more forward, um, I'm going to put a little bit of shading on his leg and back on his body. The light can be hitting here because I want to bring this leg forward, so I'm going to put a little bit of light down here as it comes. But this one I want to push back, so I'm going to put a lot of shading in this one maybe just give a little bit of a rim light here, just a little bit. I also want to push back in his face a little bit, so I'm going to put a little bit of shading right out here. And you'll notice I'm using the side of my pencil. That's so I don't have those really just sharp lines. By using the side, I can get kind of a more of a gradient. And remember, if you want a darker shade, you put a little bit more pressure to your pencil, and you're going to get a darker shadow where if you um, have a lighter pressure, you're going to get that softer. Because I want to put that distinction between the back of his head and his back, I'm going to put that shade right there, but it's going to stop right at that and just going to pop his head forward a little bit. And I'll put some good shading on his tail back there. You could also do this with color pencils or, you know, markers and stuff like that, crayons, and actually use the colors um, to shade in. But if you want to keep this black and white, there we go. 
So there is our tiger walking through the water, going on a tiger hunt. All right, so I know this is, was kind of um, an unusual position, kind of a little bit more challenging. And I, I chose it actually because it was a bit more challenging. And I've had um, a couple of my viewers asking for um, some a little bit more challenging videos. Uh, but yeah, but even if you just you know were able to draw the, the tiger's face or got something from this, that's awesome. I would love to see any pictures that you draw of this tiger. You can post them to my Facebook page and I have the link in the description box below. Well, I hope you had fun drawing um, your tiger. I definitely enjoyed doing it, even though this was the second time. This one looks lots better. <laughs> so practice, practice, practice. So I'll see you guys again in my next drawing video. And until then, God bless you. Keep drawing and we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.